on World News Tonight. Terror threat. Governments worldwide advise trapped citizens in Afghanistan to avoid the Kabul airport due to high threats. Virus origin. China criticizes the US on constantly blaming the nation for starting the COVID-19 pandemic. Rising threat. Fear spread worldwide as reports come in concerning the Delta variants resistant to most vaccines. National celebrations. Belarusian dancers surprised the world with a little help from their Russian counterparts. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Ada Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. Tonight we start off today's coverage with a look into the situation in Afghanistan. US, UK and Australia warn their citizens against going to the Kabul airport, citing a high threat of a terrorist attack. The United States has urged crowds trying to access Kabul airport to leave the area. The US, Australia and Britain are urging people to move away from Kabul airport due to a terror threat. Thousands of Afghans have gathered outside the airport in recent days, hoping to be able to leave the country. Taliban fighters had promised to provide security in the area, but there have been intelligence reports of an imminent threat from Islamic State militants, a threat which NATO and its allies say cannot be ignored. Australia's Foreign Affairs Minister, Maurice Payne. Our clear travel advice is now, do not travel to Hamid Karzai International Airport. And if you're in the area of the airport, move to a safe location and await further advice. Afghanistan remains highly volatile and dangerous. Be aware of the potential for violence and security threats with large crowds. There is an ongoing and very high threat of terrorist attack. Pressure to evacuate those who helped Western nations during the 20-year war against the Taliban has intensified, with US and allied troops due to leave next week. The Taliban says foreign troops must stick to that deadline. Since they took over Kabul 11 days ago, the US and its allies have mounted one of the biggest air evacuations in history. More than 88,000 people, including 19,000 in the past 24 hours, have been got out. There's a breaking news to bring you at this moment coming out from Kabul in Afghanistan. Early on, two explosions occurred at the country's international airport and Hamid Karzai International Airport. As of now, casualties figures are sketchy, but the United States military confirmed that three of its services members were killed by the blast. The U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan has just issued a new warning that U.S. citizens should avoid traveling to the airport and avoid airport gates at this time. The explosion happened outside Kabul's airport after a suicide bomber supposed to have belonged to the terror group ISIL donated a vest inside the terminal where U.S. troops were on the evacuation process. When a gunfight erupted, all airport gates processing evacuees are now closed and sources describe the incident as a complex attack. The White House officials tell that President Biden was being briefed about the explosion and a briefing is underway to ascertain the situation at hand. The U.S. military has reportedly begun reducing its presence in Afghanistan. The few who remain now will assist with the evac mission until August deadline. Meanwhile, the World Bank has joined the IMF in freezing the funding to Afghanistan over concerns the Taliban takeover would halt development prospects. He cited the threat to U.S. troops in Kabul as one of the main reasons for sticking to the withdrawal date. The Taliban, meanwhile, has blocked Afghans going to Kabul airport and is reportedly ordering officials at the country's finance ministry and central bank to resume work as the Islamist group faces severe shortage of cash reserves. Citing concerns of the Taliban's takeover in impacting development prospects, especially for women, the World Bank halted billions of U.S. dollars of funding for development projects to the country Tuesday, just days after the International Monetary Fund suspended payments to Afghanistan. To dispel concerns, a Taliban spokesperson promised to guarantee the safety of Afghans, including those who had worked as interpreters for foreign troops, but said the order does not apply to women who should stay home for now as the group's fighters haven't been trained on how to deal with women or how to speak to them. The Islamic Emirate is trying to reduce the crowds in Kabul airport. 
and I once again assure the people who have gathered there that they can return to their homes and live a peaceful life. We assure people that there is no danger to anyone. On contrary to his remarks, United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights Michelle Bachelet said there is credible evidence the Taliban is carrying out swift executions against civilians and Afghan security forces in provincial areas. Over in the U.S., the U.S. Supreme Court denied President Joe Biden's bid to rescind an immigration policy implemented by his predecessor, Donald Trump, that forced thousands of asylum seekers to stay in Mexico awaiting U.S. hearings. Stuck in squalid conditions. This migrant camp in Mexico exists because of a Trump-era immigration policy, which the U.S. Supreme Court has just refused to overturn. People living in the camp say they're risking their lives. The Remain in Mexico policy forces asylum seekers to wait across the border ahead of their hearings. Joe Biden's administration has been attempting to rescind it. But the Supreme Court has this Tuesday refused to block the policy, with the three liberal justices dissenting. The court's current conservative majority includes three justices appointed by Trump. For migrants living in the camp, the situation is dire. The Department of Homeland Security has said it regrets the court's decision and plans to vigorously challenge the ruling. But for now, the Biden administration is legally obliged to continue the policy. In the UK now, climate activists kicked off two weeks of protests by blocking traffic in central London. Police warn the action will cause disruption across the city and distract officers from dealing with crime. For more on this, let's cross over to other than a World News Press correspondent, Dilini Seniviratna, joining us now from London in the UK. Dilini. Yes, Shanali. The Extinction Rebellion activists marched through the capital waving banners and banging drums. Several of them were arrested, including two men who chained themselves to a van. Protests centered on a giant pink table erected in Leicester Square with the slogan, Come to the Table, directed at the government. Earlier, the activists gathered in Trafalgar Square to listen to speeches before starting their march. There were also protests in Oslo, where scores of Extinction Rebellion activists blocked access to Norway's oil and energy ministry more than five hours. Extinction Rebellion is planning a series of protests over the next fortnight, including several targeting London's financial district, which they blame for helping to fuel climate change. The group wants an emergency response from governments around the world, as well as a mass move away from polluting industries to avert the worst scenarios of devastation outlined by scientists. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adhidharana World News Special Correspondent Dilini Senemi Ratna reporting from London in the UK. Amid a drought in Bolivia, farmers and tourist boat operators are fighting over how the water of La Angostura Dam should be used. A drought in central Bolivia is creating tension over water rights, pitting boat operators against farmers. Last week, a fight broke out between the two over how the water of La Angostura Dam should be used. Police fired tear gas to break up the feuding crowd. La Angostura was first built in the 1940s to provide water for agriculture and cattle on land nearby. But now, boat tours, fishermen, and restaurant owners rely on the artificial lake. Tourism has dropped due to the global health crisis and the country's low vaccination rates. And a drought has put pressure on farmers like Jaime Rocha, who have called for the water to be released. It is a social problem. The people living in Valle Alto, the ones who live around La Angostura Dam, want to take control of it. If they released the water by opening the gates, we would have water to improve our situation as farmers and milk producers. Meanwhile, tour boat operators say they'll lose the little income they have if the water is drained. Rudy Garcia is the president of the Lakes Tourism Association. We need a good water level to be able to offer a good service for tourists. A low water level means the trips are shorter. Local media reported farmers closed major roads in the Cochabamba district earlier this week as they continue to demand solutions to the water shortage problem. 
the latest on the COVID crisis right after this break. You're watching World News. Welcome back. In Central Asia, now China criticized the U.S. politicization of efforts to trace the origin of the coronavirus, demanding without any evidence that American labs be investigated, ahead of the release of a U.S. intelligence report on the virus. China on Wednesday pushed back against U.S. efforts to trace the origin of the coronavirus, ahead of the release of a U.S. intelligence report intended to resolve various theories on how the virus emerged. It includes a once-dismissed theory about a Chinese lab leak, although U.S. officials do not expect the review to lead to firm conclusions. That's after they said China hampered international investigations on the ground in Wuhan this year, where infections first emerged in late 2019. In response to the upcoming report, Chinese Foreign Ministry's Director General of Arms Control, Fu Kong, suggested tit-for-tat investigations into American labs. Beijing has ridiculed the theory that COVID-19 escaped from a lab in Wuhan. Instead, China suggested without public evidence that the virus slipped out of a lab at a U.S. Army base in Maryland. Chinese diplomats this week once again called upon the World Health Organization to investigate. U.S. President Joe Biden was briefed on the classified report earlier this week, according to White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki on Wednesday. Saki added the Intelligence Bureau is, quote, working expeditiously to prepare an unclassified version for the public, but she did not provide a timeline. The Delta variant of COVID-19 in rare cases is breaking through and infecting people who are fully vaccinated against the virus. Some experts are also raising the possibility of a variant that's vaccine resistant. That is one that could easily evade the existing vaccines we already have. Pfizer CEO Albert Boone said Tuesday, speaking to Fox News, that a vaccine-resistant coronavirus variant would emerge eventually. He added that Pfizer could produce a shot tailor-made for such a variant 95 days after its discovery. His comments have again highlighted the concern of vaccine evasion. The director of the CDC said previously that the virus could be a few mutations away from evolving to evade the existing vaccines. Recent studies also suggest a drop in vaccine efficacy following the emergence of the more transmissible Delta variant. The CDC says vaccine effectiveness among frontline medical workers dropped to 66 percent after Delta became dominant compared with 91 percent before. The study is in line with the findings from Israel and the UK where the dominant Delta variant is causing a surge in cases despite their high vaccination rates. But all this has to be considered in view of the facts that vaccine effectiveness can wane over time and that the original efficacy estimates could have been inaccurate. And most importantly, how the mutation would unfold is largely unpredictable. Those efforts would include making it less likely for such variants to emerge. And since the virus mutates as it circulates through the population, those chances can be reduced through distancing and vaccinations. We have some good news for you. Johnson & Johnson says new data with a small group shows that its single-shot vaccine holds up for eight months, but an added booster shot increased antibody protection by nine times. Johnson & Johnson is touting the benefits of a booster dose for its single-shot vaccine. The company revealed Wednesday that the extra shot of the COVID-19 vaccine resulted in antibody levels that were nine times higher compared with those who received only the one dose. The results were part of interim data from two early stage trials. J&J says full results will be released in coming weeks. Up until now, there had been no evidence about the effect of a booster dose of the J&J vaccine. Advisors for the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had been waiting for word on how to advise immunocompromised individuals who received the J&J vaccine. According to a press release from J&J, studies show significant increases in binding antibody responses, which means the body's white blood cells join in to fight off COVID-19 in participants aged 18 to 55. 
those 65 years and older also saw a meaningful response when given a lower booster dose. JNJ says it is working with the CDC, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the European Medicines Agency, the World Health Organization, and other health authorities about delivering the J&J booster shot. Despite the convenience of the one-dose vaccine compared to two doses for Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna, the J&J shot has had the lowest use rate in Europe of all the approved inoculations and lags in the U.S. as well due to safety concerns and manufacturing stumbles. Over in Southeast Asia now, as Thailand struggles with its worst coronavirus outbreak yet, researchers have come up with a method to speed up vaccinations. For more on this, we have other than a world news special correspondent Avantika Gunasekaran reporting from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Avantika. Yes, Shanali. Thai researchers have developed a machine with a robotic arm that can extract COVID-19 vaccine doses more efficiently. They hope it will help with the country's lower than anticipated vaccine supply. According to researchers, the Autovac system uses the arm to draw 12 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine from a vial in four minutes. That's up from the standard 10 to 11 doses drawn manually, as shown on the vial labels. The extra 20% could mean more people can get inoculated. So far, only around 9% of Thailand's population has been fully vaccinated. Some health workers are already using low dead space syringes to draw up to 12 doses per vial. But the lead researcher of the team says it requires manpower and a high level of skill. Researchers say they should be able to produce 20 more autovac units within the three or four months. But government funds and support would be needed to expand across the country. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adha Darana World News Special Correspondent Avantika Gunasekaran reporting from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Just a day after the Paralympics opening ceremony, Japan decided to expand its COVID-19 state of emergency to more areas as virus case numbers continue to surge. Prime Minister Yoshihida Suga emphasized while making the announcement that the priority is to maintain its healthcare system. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said the strict nationwide lockdown enforced to stamp out COVID-19 was helping limit the spread of the highly infectious Delta variant even as the number of new cases rose. Roads turned to rivers in Colombia after swaths of the country were hit with a deluge of rain that flooded homes and caused rivers to swell over into local communities. New president tackled Zambia's unstable debt, lamenting that the national budget was overwhelmed by the cost of servicing it. The Pentagon is ordering American troops to immediately start receiving COVID-19 vaccines. U.S. Defense Secretary issued the mandate instructing service leaders to impose ambitions timelines for implementation. Uganda received 51 people evacuated from Afghanistan after the Taliban swept back into power. But officials said that they would stay temporarily until resettled by the U.S. and other nations. President Joe Biden asked big tech, the finance industry and key infrastructure companies to do more to tackle the growing cybersecurity threat to the U.S. economy. The federal government can't meet this challenge alone. President Joe Biden called on the CEOs of Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft and IBM to redouble their efforts to fend off ransomware and other cybersecurity breaches after a series of high-profile attacks on U.S. firms that hurt the economy far beyond just the companies that were hacked. The meeting in the East Room of the White House also included executives from the finance and infrastructure industries. Cybersecurity has risen to the top of the agenda for Biden after recent cyber attacks on Colonial Pipeline, which led to a run on fuel at gas stations across the U.S. Southeast, on meat processing company JBS, which affected U.S. food supplies, on software company Kaseya, which paralyzed as many as 1,500 businesses that used its products, and on network management company SolarWinds, the worst ever cyber espionage attack on the U.S. government, 
which has blamed Russia for the breach. After the meeting, Amazon said it would make its cybersecurity training available to the public for free and that it would give multi-factor authentication devices to some cloud computing customers. Microsoft said it would invest $20 billion over five years to speed up its cybersecurity work, a four-fold increase from current rates. Google said it was devoting $10 billion to cybersecurity over the next five years, but it was not immediately clear what, if any, of the figure represented new spending. And finally tonight, Belarusian delegation at the International Army Games 2021 near Moscow surprised the audience with a ballet show with a bit of help from Russian ballet dancers. During a tank biathlon competition, four dancers climbed out of two military vehicles to perform the Swan Lake Ballet finale on their armor. Behind the two pairs, soloists of the Moscow-based Russian Imperial Ballet, another four vehicles were seen demonstrating some dancing skills as well, moving and rotating to the music. Tank biathlons is a military discipline invented by Russia's Defense Ministry to hone the skills of tank crews. Each year, tank teams from various countries take part in a friendly competition to determine the most skilled tank crew. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.